We return to Gilgamesh back in Uruk, and we get history's first ever shower scene, with the camera panning over long matted hair spilling down Gilly's back as he washes away Hawawa blood from body and blade. He puts on clean robes, tied up with a sash, and dons his crown. Continuing briefly with the filming construct I've got going, the camera pans up over his shoulder, focusing on a figure leaning in the doorway. Well, hello. That was some impressive work, killing Hawawa. I was thinking, maybe we should get together sometime. Lady Inanna. Well now, so formal. Please, call me Ishtar. Just think about it, you and me, king and goddess. We would be the power couple supreme. I can hook you up with chariots of lapis and gold. Kings will kneel before you. Your goat shall bear triplets, even your laden donkeys shall outpace any mule. And no ox shall match yours at the yoke. Gilgamesh offered a wry smile. You would feed me bread fit for a god. I would drink ale worthy of a king. Please, I know about you. Who have you loved that hasn't suffered? You had your lover Dumuzi dragged into the underworld by demons. And what of the shepherd you loved, who offered sacrifice but ended up turned into a wolf? That his own children chased him away, and his dogs bit at his heels. You're just after me for my not inconsiderable looks, and when you get bored, I'll be the one to suffer. Nah, I'm not putting myself into that trap. The goddess, incensed at being shunned, ran to her father. Daddy, Gilgamesh was saying such horrible things about me. Do something about it. Arn, knowing what his daughter was like, pointed out that you did start it, sweetie. Please, Daddy, just let me have the Bull of Heaven so I can kill Gilgamesh. If you don't, I'll smash the gates of the underworld and raise the dead to consume the living. Sweetheart, that's going to make a lot of mess. Do you really need to? Daddy! All right, darling, you can have the bull as long as you make sure the people of Uruk have seven years' worth of provisions. Already done. Thank you, Dad. And she grabbed the rope and led the bull to Uruk. And so the Bull of Heaven was unleashed to wreak Inanna's vengeance. With a snort, a pit cracked open in the city, felling 100 men. A second snort took out another 200, and on a third, Enkidu fell in up to his waist. He sprang back up, seizing the bull by the horns, getting a face full of angry bull slaver for his efforts. Gilly, get over here! I've tested this creature's strength, and I've got a plan. I'll get behind it, seize its tail and pin its legs. Then you attack the front, and make the killing blow. Sound plan, babe. Let's do it. The plan went as expected. Enkidu grabbed the creature from behind, while Gilgamesh, like a brave and skillful butcher, thrust his knife into the skull, instantly felling the terror. Their victory achieved, they removed the heart of the beast, holding it aloft to the watching rays of Utu, before sitting down to rest in his presence. Their rest was short-lived, however. Inanna, her plan foiled, appeared on the walls of Uruk, loudly lamenting, Alas, Gilgamesh, who told such vicious and totally untrue things about me, has slain the Bull of Heaven. Enkidu tore off a heavenly haunch and chucked it at the Wailing Goddess. Yeah, and we'd have done the same to you. Inanna summoned her followers, and all the dancers, singers and courtesans of the temple mourned the death of the bull. Meanwhile, Gilgamesh summoned his craftspeople to admire the bull's horns, huge and coated with lapis. Removing them, he found they could hold six measures of oil between them, which he sacrificed to his father, Lugalbanda, while the horns themselves he hung in his room. Hand in hand, Gilgamesh and Enkidu strode into the streets of Uruk to bask in the adulation of the people. Gilgamesh shouted out, Who is the finest among men? Who the most glorious of fellows? Receiving the prideful answer that it was he. That night as they slept, Enkidu flipped their usual emo as he woke Gilgamesh to relay a distressing dream. The gods, An, Enlil, and Utu, had been having a chat about the whole Gilgakidu situation. This is really getting out of hand. These two have killed both Huawa and the Bull of Heaven, and chopped down my favourite cedar. Someone needs to be punished. One of them needs to die. Enkidu. Oh, come on, guys. This is all a bit unfair. And <laughs> dude, <laughs> they killed the bull because you let Inanna sick it on them. And now innocent Enkidu has to die for it? Pfft, of course you defend them. Don't think we forgot you marching with them every day. Rallying them on the way to the Cedar Forest? You're basically one of them. All this Enkidu saw and tearfully relayed to Gilgamesh. Gilly, they mean to tear us apart. For me to cross the threshold of the dead and never see you again. Gilgamesh regarded the tale with shock. 
Those bastards. I made a beautiful door for them, and they're still pissed. That was like a whole week ago. Get over it. He turned to Enkidu. Hang tight, Kiki. I'll, I'll pray to Arn. I'll beseech and Lil. I'll sort this out, you hear? Somehow. Though he knew it wasn't to be. The morning sun rose, and with it, Enkidu bitterly cursed his lot. Cursed the hunter who had found him, that his pits be filled and traps undone. Destroy his profit, diminish his income. May his share be cut in your presence. And he cursed Shamat, who tamed him, seduced him away from the animals, who made me weak. Me, who was undefiled. Never will you have a family. A drunkard stain your festive gown. Thorn and briar skin your feet. Hey, kid. I, uh, I heard the news. But why are you cursing these nice people? Those who had heard Enkidu's lamentations, and spoke to him from on high. Shamat fed you food for gods, gave you ale for kings. You may have lost innocence, but you gained the knowledge and experience of civilization. Her works raised you up and gave you the handsome Gilgamesh for companionship. And now he will lay your body out on a magnificent bed, a place of honour, and leave the entirety of Uruk in mourning you. Enkidu's tears slowed, and his heart calmed. You're right. I'm sorry, Shamat. Instead of curses, may I bless you. May your patrons be many and generous. May Inanna open the door of he whose wealth is heaped high, that he may desert his wife and children for you. That night, Enkidu had another fearful dream, wherein he was seized by a man likened to Ansu, with a lion's paws and eagle's talons. Enkidu struck back, but was overpowered and crushed. His arms were bound, and he was taken captive to the seat of Irkala, the house where none may leave, but forever dwell in darkness, sustained by soil and clay. Enkidu looked around this dead land, and saw even the kings and princes of old. Ereshkigal, queen of the underworld, sat on her throne, and before her knelt a scribe. Waking, he told Gilgamesh once more what he saw, and begged of him. Please, Gilly, my love, don't forget all the badass shit we did together. Thereafter, Enkidu became deathly ill, day by day, his strength draining from him, until the twelfth day, when he called out to Gilgamesh and made his final lament that he did not die in battle. Come dawn, Gilgamesh mourned the death of his beloved wild man, imploring all people, creatures, and geological features to do likewise. Young men and elders of Uruk, hear me! I weep for Enkidu, with whom I did such badassery as slay Hoawa and the Bull of Heaven. He tore out his hair and finery in grief, and called across the land for the finest jewellers and smiths to create a great statue of Enkidu from gold and lapis. Oxen and sheep were slaughtered and offered to the gods of the underworld to curry favour with those grim lords. Great riches were removed from Gilgamesh's treasury, a carnelian flute, a chair and flask of lapis lazuli, among other things, and presented to the gods via Utu, as he bribed them to look fondly on Enkidu. He then ran, grief-stricken, into the wilderness, and wandered alone. Bit of a sad chapter there. A story of love lost and pride punished. This isn't the end for our ghillie, so subscribe, let me know what you think. And I'll see you next time.